Hello. Um, today we're coming from a different location, um, but a location that has a great deal to do with our beloved glass and the manufacturing of it. Um, I'm in our mold warehouse today. I'm Jack Burris, the managing director and curator of the National Heise Glass Museum, for those who don't know me. And again, today we're fortunate to have Nathan Hood behind the camera. So this to me is sort of um, definitely a cathedral to industry. And it, it is almost a bit of a religious feel to it. Um, all of us out there have some high C. Um, many of us have more than some high C. But every item that was made by high C was made in a mold or had a mold as part of its production. And, and typically with the high C items, there was one mold. Um, there were not multiple molds. So many of us have items that came out of these molds. Um, and a goblet in California and a goblet in New York were produced in the same mold in the same manner. So I think that's really kind of exciting and interesting to think about. We as the Heise Collectors of America are so incredibly fortunate to have this resource. Um, as many of you know, when the Heise factory closed in 1957, um, by 1958, the Imperial Glass Company of Bel Air, Ohio, had arranged to purchase the, not only the use of the Diamond Age, but all of these incredible molds. They were moved to Bel Air, Ohio, um, where Imperial continued to use many of them um, until they closed in the early 80s. Now, many of the molds that existed before World War I were donated to the war effort and melted down. Um, so most of the molds that we have are molds that were made post-World War I. Um, but it's, it's just incredibly fortunate that we have these molds. Um, when the Imperial Glass Company closed, uh, we were offered these molds, offered to buy them back. Um, it was a major, major investment at the time. But um, as so often happens with the Heise Collectors of America, they put their efforts together and raised the money to buy the molds back. And there's wonderful stories and some interesting photographs of the group of tractor trailers and individuals that came to Newark, Ohio from Bel Air bringing all the molds home. Heise made an incredible variety of patterns and an incredible number of pieces within a pattern. Um, and there's representations here of all the patterns um, and all the different pieces. Um, Eric Tansky Clark did a wonderful article of a couple of years ago about how some of the molds were remodeled um, to alter the piece. He also did a wonderful article about how multiple pieces were made in one from one mold, um, just having to do with the way the glass was manipulated after it came out of the mold. Um, again, I can't emphasize enough how fortunate we are as the high city collectors of America to have these molds, um, to have this incredible space to safely, cleanly, dryly store them in, and the efforts of our members that went into 
organizing and putting this together are just incredible. Um, to be able to go to a notebook and open it up and see A, if we have a mole, and B, know where it is. Um, these are incredible research tools. Um, as many of you know, our reproduction program has been a great source of income and joy for our members. Um, so, just wanted many of you to have a glimpse of the warehouse because I know um, very few of you ever had the opportunity to see this. As you can see, the space is rather tall. Um, and we have molds stored to the ceiling um, on pallets. Um, the molds are iron, they're very heavy. Uh, we were very fortunate last year um, to receive an anonymous donation and be able to replace our forklift um, so we can travel up to the upper pallets and, and bring our molds down. Um, and search for what we're looking for. Um, this is a future project that we're working on, um, and these are some of the molds that we're looking at to do that project. Uh, in a future uh, episode, we'll, we'll go into more of the details of the molds, certainly. But, um, Last year was also an exciting year in that we were able to install new lighting here. Um, and this new LED lighting makes so much more possible here and makes the possibility of some future projects um, much more feasible when we can see what we're doing. So, um, we as I say, I think this is sort of a cathedral in many ways. Um, and when I pull out a mold and it's something that a piece of glass that I own was made in, it's, it's kind of exciting. Um, it's also continues to be incredible to me that here's this industrial heavy iron mold and such a beautiful delicate piece of glass came out of it. So we'll look forward to discussing items up here um, in future episodes. And as always, I appreciate you spending time with us today. Thank you very much.